into the feeling. I don't know. I don't know. Ten kids, I guess. Ten kids. Yeah. I guess they had a lot of popular singles. They had singles that charted, but. They did. I remember that, those singles being Even Northern the Out. Vaccines had singles that charted. Ooh. Out the other day. Well, they've got a new album coming out. They do look they? very tanned. Do they? On, do the, they? on the book billboard. I was like, well, there's some. They got billboard money. Yeah, there's some healthy success there. They're on Universal or something, then. Are they? Oh, they were. I, d- I never liked the vaccines. I've never, they've never been my vibe. Yeah, I missed the vaccines. I didn't really. It, you weren't missing much. Yeah, you didn't miss much. But that one song that was even, I think, got right, to the US. Right. I played one of them at pool once, you know. Did you win? I didn't win. When, I, but that guy's left the band now. Well, I guess at least they're not Mumford and uh, well, are they, are they any diff- I mean, you know, Mumford and Sons is a band that makes me want to like sew up myself and just <laughs> like hide away in the dark. They are, they are like objectively awful. Like I saw them play, and it destroyed like Led Zeppelin for me retroactively. Really? I saw Robert Plant on stage with Mumford and Sons, wow. and that was I was just like, I, can't, I cannot take this out of my ears. What was he singing with them? Or was yeah, he it was. I mean, it was at a god awful. It was at a thing called the Americana Awards, which is. I mean, how did you end up there? I was working there at the. It was at the Hackney Empire. Oh, so. that okay. sounds fun! Like it was an awful event. I was about to say that. that I, 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 the Americana Amer- Awards. They're not even Americana. Oh, they're just like shitty it's just they're Scottish fucking band. Bulky shit. Are they Scottish? I think they pretend they are. But they're actually from Hertfordshire. Yeah, like, they're actually from London. Like. But yeah, I told that evening, not only did I see Mumford and Sons with uh, Mr. Plant, it's just like, just, it was like a 10 pin, you know, like a bowling ball, like sort of just destroy. Like, I was just like, oh, there's Led Zeppelin gone for me. <laughs> I, I had to clean up human shit off no. the floor. So, no. I mean, yeah, that was, that was. That's what happens when Mumford and Sons and Robert Farn <laughs> go on stage. Yeah, it was like, there, was a, there was a physical representation. Who, who shit? You don't want to know. Glastonbury yeah. has issued warning against bogus ticket sellers. So I haven't even released the liner. This is what blows my mind. In, a, in the, this day and age, where no one's got any fucking money, Glastonbury sells out of like three hundred pounds per ticket, and there's no, not even a whisper of a liner. Man. I think it's gross. Well, I, I just think people need to wake up. I just wish I was like Emily Evers or whatever. Oh, yeah. seems like the dream kind of thing. Yeah, I do. I'm just bitter that they won't give us any free tickets. Yeah, Glastonbury, give us a fucking ticket. And maybe this <clears throat> is a little lesson. <laughs> who who was there when you were? It was Radiohead, Foo Fighters, Ed Sheeran, The XX, The National, Biffy Gyro, Katy Perry, Best Festival of My Life, man. Katy Perry. I don't remember seeing Kate. I must have been doing some things because I don't remember half of these people. I don't even know if this was the one I, I went one year and Radiohead were there. It's a surprise they haven't announced any of the headliners for this year. What's your stance on like seeing an artist at a festival? Do you prefer them to play like the great? Play the hits. Play the hits. That's what the people it. want, though. Yeah. I think if you're a diehard fan, you don't care. But if you're a casual yeah. fan, yeah. I would want like the hits. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to show up and listen to some new shit. But maybe I, I don't know. I yeah, but that might be my. But then maybe I'm like I'm sold now. I'm the biggest fan. Who knows? Keep an open mind. Maybe some deeper cuts might be better. So, when we saw the Strokes All Points East last year, they yeah. did play the deep cuts and no one fucking knew anything. And it was like, <laughs> everyone was just standing there. It was about four people singing and that was it. Like, it was just me, you, two people next to us and Julian Casablanca singing those songs. And it was just like, I felt bad. Was that he, was a weird crowd, Was he man. berating the crowd again? Well, the should've. sound was a bit shit again. Mm. Yeah. But then on top of that, like, it's just a weird crowd. It was like half a bunch of like over 30 year olds and then half a bunch of TikTok kids. You guys up uh, close? We were close enough. Yeah. But the sound was still really shit, wasn't it? Yeah, it always I is. We... Oh, no, it's not. All point six, we love your, we love your work. We love covering that. Yeah, festival. Sorry, just get us back on how many places. I saw, I saw Hype and they were, the sound was great. Yeah, yeah. it was a really good sound. 
maybe we're just in a bad spot. The thing is, when you're seeing the strokes, you probably need to be like right at the front to probably mm. experience it. Here's some kind of music okay. news, and it leads into us listening to the single. Okay. Some big pop artists have released some shit this week. Like? Little Nas X. Yep. Ariana Grande. Yep. That's about it. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> For our first single, it's Little Nas X with Jay Christ. <laughs> That was Little Nas X with Jay Christ. What are mm. your thoughts, Joel? I liked it. I like the, the humble sample. I don't know if it was a sample. I think it's just ripping it off. You could probably sue on this if you want, if you were Kendrick. What were your thoughts, Sam? Um, It's not really my... I mean, I just found it a bit sort of underwhelming and a bit... I don't know. It didn't really do much for me. But it was... It's no the- old time road. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It it didn't really do much for me, if I'm honest. I thought it was a good pop song. I thought it was all right. I almost felt a bit too, like, short, in a sense, or, yeah. like, just a bit. Could have gone somewhere else. Yeah. The video is really cool, but the music itself's a bit uninspired. It's just, like, a bit of a rip-off of Humble, and that's, like, a seven- or eight-year-old song now. Is it? Yeah, it is an old song. Really? Shit. It's 2024. It, that song made me want to listen to Humble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then just go down the Kendrick rabbit hole. What I will say about it, though, is that I love how much of a troll Little Nas X is, and I love the way he constantly pisses off religious fanatics and also, like, constantly ripping off, like, you know, religious um, imagery, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What scores on the doors? Doors on the doors. Uh, maybe like a 59. 59. Yeah. That's, that's low for a song you like. I know. Yeah. That's what I mean. I'm just like a walking so easily swayed. I am. I am. I'm just like, just people please that. Um, <laughs> yeah, 59. Because I feel like, yeah, there wasn't enough build to it. I feel like Live It would be really good. I feel like Live It would like go off. But 
yeah, it just felt a bit too fillery. Mm. I feel like it wasn't bringing anything new to the table. Yeah. And also it's a bit, I've had better little Nas X. Exactly, exactly. The lyrics didn't particularly grab me at any yeah. point. Like I get some of the shit he's going for, but like, Nothing stood out. Like, no lyrics stood out, whereas I feel like in his previous work, some of the lyrics, like, really stand out. Yeah, but maybe not even for good reasons, though, you know. So Yeah, but they still stand out. They're still, like, takeaways. I get what you're saying. I feel like I couldn't really take anything away from that song other than it sounds like Humble. <laughs> what score would you give it, Sam? When I'm with Jules on 59, yeah, I'd say around there, like, yeah, 58, maybe. 58, no. What score did you give it, Al? Well... No one's asked me yet, so. <laughs> but I would give it a, maybe like a 60. A 60. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's an all right little, little yeah. pop song. It's nothing crazy. I'm, I'm interested to hear the album. Yeah, I'm interested to hear what comes next for Little Nazo. Yeah. Because I think the problem with his debut album was that it just was a bit inconsistent. Yeah. It had some good singles, but not a good cohesive album but when you get to that level as a pop star it's like cardi b for example i think said something like i would make better music but my fans don't want it (laughs) so it's like the kind of people who listen to it (laughs) they just want something really easy to consume well should we move on to the next single Mm -hmm. which is uh mgmt nothing to declare Mm. nothing to declare Documents are there 
So what do I think of MGMT, nothing to declare? I've got nothing to declare. <laughs> nah. Um, I thought, like, all the singles of this album so far, it was really nice. I like the kind of acoustic -y kind of direction of gone with this album mm. um this album definitely feels like one of the more like more emotional kind of album yeah definitely a bit more like sad mgmt vibe yeah like i feel like it's definitely more of a congratulations yeah it's like a spiritual you know su what's that successor succession from congratulations well, i think it's so there are so many like nice like lyrics in it and i feel like uh, everyone gives me shit for like an mgmt so much but i feel like they're great they're a great band like they i feel like they don't compromise in their production there's like lyric writing and their actual like ability to like play their instrument like you can definitely they tell they that they're like a pretty meticulous with the production and yeah, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they spent like hours mm -hmm. just trying to get the reverb right on one little mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, what's well, what's his face, isn't it? David uh, Friedman. Friedman. Yeah, like he's yeah, Flaming I think he's Lib, worked with him on every album. Mercury Rev, Tame Impala. But I also read that someone who produces like Little Yachty and stuff was doing this one. Really, so, that's cool. Which is interesting because it's not very like you know, it's quite acoustic and chilled. What were your thoughts, Sam? Yeah, I thought it was lovely. I really, uh, really enjoyed it. It's definitely a headphone song, I feel. Yeah. yeah. And some like real bits that you just want to like listen to. Uh, yeah. It's and... definitely like, you can totally just be on the train listening to that and miss your stop kind of vibe. Melancholic. And I love all the like guitar parts yeah. on it. Mm. Like all the like. <laughs> it's a good song. Like, it is a good song. You know, I, I, it doesn't feel it bad. Me... Thanks, guys. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like you, it, we, we live in such like an interesting time with like music now where it's, there are so many different genres. Like we just came from like Lil Nas to like this, whereas like you, like maybe like 40 years ago, you might only get the MGMT type music. And I just mm. think it's nice that they can both coexist in the same week, you know. I don't know, that sounds got me. Cut me all emo. <laughs> I think, I think, um, guitar picking <laughs> the same kind of thing we were talking about with the lemon twigs. It's like, I, I think they're quite good at almost capturing something from the past, but yeah. giving it like this modern twist to it. Yeah. And it's probably with the help of uh, Dave Friedman because it's like just really like Is big like, production. Hmm. Is he like been around for, been around the block for a long time then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's done stuff with like Flaming Lips. Flaming Lips. Nice. And Mercury Rev, that, you remember that album? No, I don't know. Who, who's that by? 90s. Aren't they, isn't that the band? Aren't yeah. Old man? Oh, okay. There was, there was one, I should know the name of all these things. But yeah, those Flaming Lips and that was yeah. sort of big. What score would you give it? I, I'm in the 90s already. Oh, really? Oh. Wow. I'm uh, not going to go that crazy. Really? I'm going to give well, it a I think 90. of the three singles I've heard so far, that one probably is actually the weakest. Really? It's still a great song, and in the context of the album, it's nice. Definitely one of the best, softer songs on the album. I would give it a pretty high-ish score. I'd probably give it like an 85 person okay. there. So that is what I'm going to bring 85 down. and a 90. 85, and I'll go for, yeah, 80. I'd say 80. I'm going to bang 80. on 80 for yeah. that. Announce cool. the next song, Sam. Tear Gas. By uh, Sky Daddy and Tyler. There, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Sky Daddy with, uh, well, Sky Daddy and Tyler cried with tear gas. What are your thoughts? It grew on me. It yeah, grew on me as it went along. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a pretty song. Pretty song. It's a bit bored, honestly, but I think. I know, started off boards and then. I'm sure the indie kids are later, uh, but. Oh, yeah, that's fucking love it. But it's. It's probably not the best song on the EP. I've heard the rest of the EP. Mm. Is the EP and, out? You know, nah, I don't think it's out yet. Uh-huh. But yeah, um, I thought it was a beautiful song. It was really pretty, really yeah. nice, like harmonies between the two of them. Yeah. Quite cute in a sense. It is like, cute. Going out. Yeah, it's a pretty um, song. It's, it's, you know, more Radio 3, isn't it? Than- which isn't a bad thing. Mm. I listen to Radio 3. <laughs> I feel like... I'm Radio 3. Tyler Crowd and Sky Dead. <laughs> well, it's the classical. Oh. But they do have like late night, you know, the whatever, late night moods. If you heard this oh. at like 11 at night on the radio yeah. in my kitchen, I'd be like, I fucking love this song. That's yeah, quite, that it is, is quite, quite so nice. You really painted a picture there. But like right now, have, being forced to listen to it and judge it, I'm like more... Uh, I don't know. It's funny. It's weird, isn't it? But yeah, it's a very beautiful, like, pretty song. I think if you got, yeah, I get what you're saying. If it hit you at the right time, it would be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. It does feel like it's just missing something, maybe, maybe just a bit more like instrumentation on it. Like, yeah. But I don't know. It's definitely a nice song. 
definitely wouldn't be giving it a low score. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, obviously, Sky Daddy reached out to do some writing to the magazine, but he never did. Oh, so that's why you don't like it. So for that reason, I'm giving it <laughs> a, a zero. zero. <laughs> can we say that? Are we like... Yeah, of course we can. Okay, cool. Why not? Sorry, Sky Daddy. We love you. It's a great name. I'm, I'm, I'm into the name. I mean, we're reviewing the fucking song. We are reviewing At the very the least, we're giving our opinion. Yeah, true, true. And that's our it. opinion is that it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice, cute song, and I, I would see it live. I can see it. I can see it in like somewhere like the Troubadour or something. Yeah, I'd love to see Sky Daddy play live. Yeah, mm. but there's a chair around. I'd also, <laughs> yeah. I'd also love to see uh, a sofa. Yeah, I'd also love to see those reviews that he said he might do, <laughs> but we'll find He's out. A, the, yeah, busy. He's a busy man. All right, what what did everyone think of the scores? For this song, what scores did everyone think? I think like seventy-two. Seventy-two. Yeah. Yeah, you're in. You're in my. Uh, you're in my mind there. I was going to say seventy because I said eight seventy. Yeah. Okay. MGMT, which was a similar kind of thing, but yeah. like it. I don't know. It just it kind of pushed it a bit more. It had a bit more. Well, yeah. I, I actually thought it was a bit better than seventy. So I'm gonna gonna, gonna gonna give it an eighty. An eighty. Wow. Really? Yeah, I thought it was like eight out of ten. It was just missing something to make mm. it a bit more like yeah. perfect. Yeah. But it was really nice. And the next single is Unix with <laughs> Estuary of Doom. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it, but Estuary. I don't know. <laughs> Channel the pines for your 
when we think of Unix and Estuary of Dreams, then? I really liked it. It was probably had what was kind of maybe lacking in the Sky Daddy song, you know? Yeah. Maybe. A bit more like instrumentation. Well, for a four minute track, it was pretty breezy. Yeah. I was, I mean, reminds me of who blanking that big, the big Canadian ensemble band, the guy got Arcade Fire. It had that kind of vibe. We well, did know, have a bit of an like, arcade fire. We're vibe, like, you it? know, we're a massive commune making music. I feel like it could have got bigger. I'd like to have seen if I feel like if you're gonna go use like a lot of instruments and have that orchestral vibe, like really fucking go for it. Like, I think in the <clears> context <throat> of the album though, it's a bit bit of a chilled one. I right. think the rest of the songs are a little bit harsher. Okay. And a little bit more in your face. Right. Okay, so you yeah, tell us something about them. But, yeah, uh, who are they? The an Australian band. They've put out an album already. This is their from their second album, which is coming later this year. Mm-hmm. I think they're um, pretty interesting. They're, I guess, a little bit down the black country new road route. Mm. But I don't know. I think the singers may be a bit better than what's come out of the British scene. And it's nice to hear someone doing something out of Australia that isn't just like psych. Or pub rock. Or, yeah. yeah or not, like, to, not to shit on those bands. Or Garage. Yeah. And it's nice that they're doing it all independently as well. Are they? Okay. Yeah. So they were Melbourne, Perth, Sydney. I think no, Sydney band. Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to listen to more of the uh, stuff. I mean, I know nothing. Never heard them before. So, yeah. yeah. What score would you give it? I think I'd give that maybe a top end 70. So maybe like 78. 78. Sam? Yeah, 75, something like that. Cool. So. I think I would give it A because I enjoyed it and it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool uh, album artwork. Yeah. Yeah, the actual album cover is really cool. Yeah. Crocodiles. Just, you know, why does not sing more about crocodiles down there? Well, I think yeah, this sure. this whole album is like a bit of a concept album. Okay. Yeah. And a bit about like Australian nature. Yes. I think there's themes of that kind of shit in it. There's a smoking bubble. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that's from Australia, that phrase. That's Toy Story. Is it? Yeah. Is it actually? I've only ever seen Toy Story like twice. I'm not like a diehard fan. That's sad. Yeah. Left an impression. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Is that seriously from Toy Story? Yeah, I thought like, it was from. There's like, a snake in my boot. I thought it was like from the fucking <laughs> Australian, like, I thought it was like Steve Irwin or something. Maybe it was. Maybe they ripped it off him. Yeah. I legend. Rest in peace. Should we blast on to the next song? The next song is The Smile with Friend of a Friend. I can go anywhere that I want I just gotta turn myself inside out Back to front Thank you. 
That was the smile with friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I find I love their album, the, the album they did, mm. the first album. Um, yeah. And it didn't like this. I was, I was like, you know what? I actually just want to hear Radiohead, like just yeah. put the band together. Get the band back together. But the first album didn't make me feel that. Like I thought it was an interesting, like parallel universe. Yeah. This one, I probably I was I was thinking, what do the other guys think? Like, what's uh, what's rest of Ed and think of- Colin and Phil going? They're like, they, I mean, I don't know. I found the jazz drumming a bit annoying on that song. I enjoyed the song, but I go. I feel like you know you were saying it was a bit long about like three hours long wasn't that the piano is just like johnny greenwood in his sleep or one you know it's just <laughs> it's like he that's from like every other radio music yeah. musically i liked quite a few elements of it i liked all the like crescendos and mm-hmm. then it kind of built up to something that it like yeah. flow it back down and it'd be like just the piano and tom there was definitely like a bit of a beatlesy thing going on in there piano chord progression wise mm-hmm. But it didn't like, you know, it wasn't like in your face Beatles rip off. Yeah. Like mm. Karma Police or something, which is, is a Beatles song. Is it? Yeah. It's like the same music as Sexy Sadie. Oh, really? That's I didn't know true, that. isn't it? Yeah. I don't think I liked it. I know there's like better songs from them. I think I want to listen to that again. Yeah, same. I'm intrigued yeah, by same. it. Yeah, same. And personally, of all of the Smile songs I've heard, that that one's actually up there, and I, I like really? it. Well, including the uh, the first album, yeah, the new yeah, including the first album, because okay. I feel like I just like it when he sits down and writes a pretty piano. Part, mm. and, you know, I don't know who came up with the piano part, but and the strings were nice on it. Yeah, and I, I like certain bits of it. I like the way it kind of builds up and then yeah, it kind of gives you a bit of resolve, but. It yeah. kind of plays with that, which is kind of interesting. Um, but maybe it lends to the whole when's this song going to end kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'd, I'd need to listen to it again. What score would you give it? I'd say 68. The, uh, Late 60s, yeah. Cool. Sam? I'd say I'd give that one an 80 again, even though my reservations, are, yeah, I would like, I'd partly need to sort of, as a single, maybe lower, but as a piece of music uh, i get what you're saying like, uh, it's hardly like a banger but it's <laughs> it's a good piece of music yeah. no doubt like it's a great piece of music yeah, it's one, of, one of my personal more preferred preferred smile song okay. but i haven't listened to it enough i think if i listen to it more i'd enjoy it more for me it just felt like a watered down off cuts of other radio, radio. Yeah. yeah and i i, I mean i'm a massive fan of both those bands What's next? Well, no one's asked me oh, what sorry. I would give give it. Well, you like it. It's, all... it's your favorite smile song. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. That is big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it... A hundred. An 82. <laughs> why not? An 82. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was better than the last two songs, but I preferred that MGMT song. The next song is Ariana Grande with Yes And... Yes, and. Yeah, yes, a and. bit of improv. <laughs> yeah, a bit of improv. Oh, yeah, that is very improv. Zip, zap, zop. She's got a formula of, you know, thank you, next, next. yes, and. and. <laughs> she work in hospitality or something. <laughs> All right, let's play the song.
Think lads, Ariana Grande, yes and yes and no. Fuck that uh, shit. I actually thought it was all right. I definitely I thought, thought, yeah, like I didn't think it was bad at all. Like it was a nice pop song. Clearly, there's some like ripping off of Madonna going on, but what's wrong with that? It's just give me Madonna though. Just do something else. That was a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, I did not care for that. I just Why? waste my time. What did you not like about it? Well, the, just there's no nothing, nothing original. Not even as a pop, you know, piece of pop music. It's just it's not derivative. Yeah. Or, not even, or maybe I mean, it is a bit catchy. Yeah, it's catchy. It's got it hits those notes, but nah, come on. It definitely had some like emptiness behind it that like pop music sometimes can have like very vapid but she's got a great voice and it just i don't know yeah she does have an incredible voice you know there's some songs on thank you next where she like actually like really goes for it and Mm. i thought for a comeback single after not putting out anything for four years that was actually quite average yeah people (laughs) are saying ariana grande is back with a new single to Fuck the critics because they're all bitching about her, about dating some guy out of that SpongeBob Wicked guy. or something. Yeah. And yeah. the whole uh, Manchester thing. I mean, that. Yeah, know, fucking hell. It's insane Jesus. insane what that, you know, that. I mean, so as Damn. as a person, like what she went through that and how she came out and yeah. what she did about, I, I give that a hundred. Yeah. This yeah. song, I'm giving a zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I can't. I just, <laughs> Are you really giving it a zero? <laughs> yeah. We're going so first low. Zero. Zero. Our first zero. I felt like it didn't showcase her very well, like or as well as we know her to be. I think you're right. I think she's capable of a lot more. Mm. You know, yeah. what score would you give it? Uh maybe like a forty-nine. Forty-nine. And you know, if, uh, what's this Max Martin as a pop impresario? I mean, yes, they that you know what for quoting or inspired by madonna but i feel there's i mean that's a high bar i mean yeah. maybe what like shep Pe- pettibone madonna um, a high bar of like pop music it's do we really have to make a vogue 2024 version like people love hearing the same shit yeah. over and yeah. over again it's hey. the it's the the culture that wants mm. it but but then you say like thank you next was such like an original to me it felt like an original new pop song do you know what i mean like there wasn't really anything like that before that song so she is capable of like creating something like that yeah for sure i agree nothing then- sounds more monotone than hearing a big group of women do thank you next on the karaoke because <laughs> they're all drunk and they can't really keep up with it yeah next yeah. next thank you <laughs> next that quiet shit but anyway, <laughs> not that anyone would ever ask me, oh, but what I would, score give, would you give? give it a score of probably like 50. Why not? It was all right, but it was not great. Can't even. And you're going to stick him with a zero. Yeah. Stick him with a zero. Yeah. Wow. Waste my time with that crap. <laughs> all right. Last but not least, we have Waxahachie. Waxahachie. How, how do you say yeah. that, man? And the name of the song is Right Back to It. (laughs) Featuring. And it's featuring MJ Lenderman. Is that how you say it? Yeah, I think so. Yes.
That was Waxahachie with Right Back To It. That's good. I like your radio <laughs> voice. <clears throat> that was nice. And the song was nice too. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a nice slice of indie Americana. Yeah. Yep. There's that word. <laughs> or, or you could call it a bit of old cunt. Alt like cunt. Alt, alt, yeah. cunt and alt country. Alt country. Like alt the... cunt. I mean, it, yeah, it was like slap bang in the middle of that genre. You know, it's Gillian Welch and Dave Rawlins. I mean, that's the sort of like copy and paste, really, of that. Yeah, I thought it was really nice little melody, mm. nice vibe. It'd be nice to hear the full album. She's got a full album coming out. Yeah, Shame. yeah, I'm with you. I mean, for me, that I I just you know I'm I'm happily listen to that kind of music all day long. Mm. Um, similar to the uh, what was the one we listened to the Black Country New Roads people, the Sky Daddy. Yeah, Sky, oh, yeah. Sky Daddy. I mean, I put it in a set. It's just sort of what you kind of lean to for that kind of acoustic yeah. vibe, I guess, isn't it? Like those chord progressions. Are yeah, easy on my ear. I like it. Yeah, it's definitely easy listening. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, actually. I can't really fault it too much. It's like yeah. just a good, nice little song. Yeah. Maybe it could be... I've had better songs from Waxahachie. It definitely sounds nice, and it's definitely like a good lead into the new album. Yeah, I think as a reintroduction, I think it's a great one. I like the backing vocals on it. Mm -hmm. I liked... 
Yes, yeah. lovely production. Yeah, yes, really yeah, nice. great. And she's got a really nice voice. It's mm -hmm. very like you can, you know, it's very distinct and very nice like accent yeah. that she's got, and it lends well to the music, obviously. Yeah, totally. Yeah, she's really good. Waxahachie at writing like indie country totally. music, really, like or Americana, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah. No. Or even alt cant. <laughs> <laughs> What's everyone else's thoughts? Anyone else got anything to bring it. to the table? I liked it. I thought it was a good song. I felt I don't know. Yeah, I've got no complaints. Yeah, yeah. that. I'd I mean, listen to it again. I wouldn't skip it if I heard it. Kind of want to be driving down a yeah. Texas road. Yeah, it's oh. definitely like good in your pickup truck. Yeah, with the pink carnation. <laughs> I think that's the name of that Vaccines album, actually. Is it? Oh, my what? God. Full circle. The, I think their next album is a bit Americana themed, even though the songs I heard sounded pretty goddamn weak. Yeah. But... <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Why are we talking about the vaccine so much? What is it called? Pink carnation? Just something like that. Wow. Pink carnation is in a big truck. <laughs> The day the music died. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was their first out, album, wasn't album. it? <laughs> what scores would everyone give the Waxahachie? I'll go first. I would give it a... <laughs> Just because no, otherwise no, no one, one else was there earlier. I will give it a 78. 78. 78. But it wasn't the best thing I've heard today. Yeah, I kind of agree. I'd probably give it like a 72 or something. Cool. Yeah, I like I like it a lot, um, but I guess I'm with you. Like it's, it's but yeah, I go for seventy nine. Let's say nice. nice, nice. All right, and the scores are in. In last place, it's Ariana Grande Yay. with yes and never want to hear that song again. Yeah, in second yeah, last place, cool. we've got Little Nas X with Jay Christ. Jay Christ, that's a low score. <laughs> In third last place, it's Sky Daddy and Tyler Cried with tear gas. Tyler's going to be crying over there. Big jump though, <laughs> fifty-nine to seventy-four. Yes, much, yeah. yeah. Much so seventy-four jump. is a decent score. I mean. In fourth place, we've got Waxahachie with seventy-six point three. But she'll be Waxa happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> <laughs> in third place we've got the smile with friend of a friend don't be smiling about that ha, ha, ha. Yeah. I'm yeah. ruining my legacy so, here I, I don't know will they will they will they and in second place we've got Unix with estuary of dream estuary of dream are you dream. looking at me that's a dreamy the, score the winner Sam do you want to do the honours oh you do you go in your hands cool. I'll say it though MGMT Nothing to declare. Well done, MGMT. Very, very cool. Pound the bucks. MGM top score. <laughs> That's terrible. Also, what about if you have a puppet that could just, like, if you really hate it, the puppet can talk, and so then you won't get blamed. Like a sock puppet. It'll be the still listening single showdown sock puppet. If, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's like... <laughs> I really hate this song, but I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> like, maybe I can yeah, like the yeah, puppet. Sure, yeah. but that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I think um, you're a funny boy. Although, you know, it's, a, yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be mean. Yeah. An Evil puppet. Yeah. <laughs> For an independent like, puppet. Flames.